Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Foxy Cart 101. We're super, super excited to have each of you here with us today. Um, this is uh, we've we've just been super impressed with the with the response we've had to the webinar. Uh, my name is Josh Bartolomucci, and I work with uh, the support, pre-sales, and marketing for Foxy Cart. So, if you've ever emailed or called, we've probably uh, we've probably chatted before. All right, so. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to be covering the basics of FoxyCart um, and pretty much getting your, um, your store uh, created and then going from that to getting a product added to your website and then going live. Um, you know, we get different questions about, you know, where do, the, where do I manage my products? Where do I set it up? Um, how do I do this? How do I do that? And so hopefully we can clarify some of those things today. Anyways, we're we'll going to get started. The first thing that you need to do, if you haven't, is create an account. So the great thing about FoxyCart is that it's completely free during development. So you can build and test as long as you need to without paying a dime. We don't even ask for a credit card. So you know, after the webinar, if you haven't done yet, you can go and create an account, get your store started, and you can manage multiple stores from the same administration as well. You're going to get access to all of our functionality. Um, so you can build and test as long as you need to. Um, and again, you only pay us when you're ready to go live. So once you've got your store created, the first thing you're going to be taken to is our the FoxyCart administration. And this is where you're going to set up a few basic things that are kind of required so that we, you can actually start testing. Um, so just to clarify, FoxyCart is a bit different than other solutions out there in that we don't actually manage your website for you. We don't manage your products. We don't even build out your products. FoxyCart lets you use the tools and technologies you're already familiar with to build your website and build your store. So FoxyCart comes into play when it comes to the cart portion of your, of your whole shopping experience. So what we do is we securely host the cart, the checkout, and the receipt, and then handle the emails for your store. Everything else is hosted and resides with you, the website, the product pages, et cetera. So um, in, in saying that, well, there's a few things we're going to have to set up, and that's mainly going to be the default templates for your store uh, for the cart, checkout, receipt, and email, and also our payment settings and our, our default uh, category. So when you create your account and you get in, you, usually you'll be walked through these steps. But just in case you, you got stuck somewhere and need to go back, you can find them on the dashboard right down here under Required Store Configuration. And so we're going to start with that default category. And I'm just going to walk you through quickly setting these up so you can see a product on your website very quickly and go through that whole checkout process. Now, just to confirm here, everything you see here can be customized even more. So you can have uh, you know, fully customized templates that seamlessly match your website. Um, it's really up to you. But for today's webinar, we're just going to go through the basic standard templates so we can quickly show uh, how everything works. So we're going to first go to our default category. And this is under the product column for categories. So when a product's added to cart, FoxyCart is going to look for a category code that's passed with those product, the product parameters. Um, and so if a product category code is not passed, then we're going to refer to the default category for settings. And so in the categories, uh, you can specify tax rates, shipping options, whether it's live, flat rates, no shipping. And you can even set up you know, quantity discounts and specific emails that may go to the customer or to store administrators based on if that product has been purchased uh, in, that, in that specific category. So again, for demo purposes, we're going to keep it simple here. Uh, I'm going to set up just a you know, ship using a flat rate fee of $5, and then I'm going to go ahead and update this. So now our default category has been set up, and so you will need that set up before you can press on with FoxyCart. So the next thing we're going to need to do is set up our test payment gateway. So we're going to go under the store column to payment. And this is where you can configure what payment methods are you going to accept on your checkout page. Um, so by default, when you create your uh, FoxyCard account, you're going to be on test servers. And while you're on test servers, no transactions will actually be made as far as you know, uh, debits made against the customer's account. So everything that's run through test servers is considered a test transaction. 
So, uh, and once you, you upgrade to a paid subscription, that's when you can flip to live servers and you can input your, your live uh, payment gateway credentials. So by default, I recommend for quick setup, go ahead and opt to let customers pay with a credit or debit card. And then authorize.net is a great one to test with. And what we'll do is we'll actually provide test account information for you. So if you'll just click on use default test account, it'll implement, uh, quickly input that test account information there. Now, of course, if you've already got a gateway set up and you've got, you know, test credentials from them, you can choose that from here and input your own. You can also go down and choose other uh, payment, uh, alternate payment methods, you know, like bit pay, purchase orders, things like that. Uh, I, some of these, though, like purchase order will require a paid account, though, just a heads up there. So once you've set that up, we're going to click Update. Now we've got the default category and the payment settings set up. So now we need to set up our templates, and then we're just about ready to get these products implemented into our website. So we're going to go to the templates section and set up first our cart template. Now again, I recommend anytime I do pre-sales or support, I always recommend start with the standard or tech templates that FoxyCart provides. Uh, because these are real bare bones and they're easy to build upon if you do want to customize. Uh, and again, you can customize as much as you want to, but let's just keep it simple for now. So I usually recommend choosing the Foxy Car standard or text, and then you can go ahead and update that. So next we're going to go to checkout template. And again, just keep it simple. Now on this page, there's going to be two other options that you can you can configure here. The first one is the checkout type. And when a customer goes to the checkout page, you can say, I want to require that they're a guest checkout, or I want to let them check out as an account where they actually provide a password and then they can save their information. Or maybe I want to allow both guest and account, but I want to default to the account option. And so this is where you can configure that. For checkout type, just choose what you know, makes the most sense for your setup. All right, and then we'll go on, update that here. And you may be seeing some other things on here like remote template URL, and uh, that's going to be for another webinar as far as uh, styling. And this is where you can actually pull a template from your website, and we'll securely host that for you and uh, for the checkout cart or receipt. Okay, next we're going to go to the receipt template under templates here. And again, just choosing standard makes the most sense for this demo. And these are bare bones, neutral templates that it'll, it'll work nicely for, uh, you know, we have many stores that even keep those. They don't even really customize, but you, you do have that option. All right, and finally, we're going to go to email. And I, and I recommend just doing standard. Now, once you've done that, it's going to input all the, the, you know, the code in here and, and content for that standard template with different tokens. Now, you're more than welcome to go in and even add some, you know, some custom content here um, or, you know, uh, configure this however you want. There's two other options on this page that you want to configure as well. So the first one is the receipt email subject. So if you don't provide a subject line in this spot, then we're not going to send a, a, an email receipt to the customer at checkout. So you'll want to put something here, you know, thanks for your order or here's your receipt, whatever, you know, makes the most sense there. Uh, and then there's the option to BCC store email address. And so what this does is this will send a blind carbon copy of the receipt that we send to the customer to any store administrator emails uh, under the settings page. And so if you want to receive a copy of that, you'll definitely want to check that there. And that's a great way to get notified um, when there's a new order placed. And so uh, let's go to settings real quick, and I'll show you where to manage those email addresses. So under the store column for settings, you're going to see different fields here for uh, your store name, your store URL, your receipt continue URL, other things here. Also, your subdomain that you provided when you created your account. And this is how um, uh, you know, products relate to the right cart and checkout, et cetera. And then we're going to refer to the store email section. So this is where you can plug in multiple email addresses separated by a comma for email addresses that need to be notified, and especially on a new transaction. OK, so that gets us our initial setup. So now it's time to actually get everything into our website. So just to confirm, again, FoxyCart can be implemented anywhere. Uh, anywhere HTML can be added or anywhere you can add a, a link. FoxyCart products are created with an HTML link or form. 
um, passing in different parameters, you know, the name of the product, the price, and any custom options you want. So for, for today's webinar, we're going to keep it real simple, but I'm going to show you different types of products, donations, subscriptions, bundle products, so you get an idea of what you can do with BoxyCard. So on the, under the store column, you're going to see sample code link at the very end there. So this is where you're going to get your what we call our FoxyCard includes or FoxyCard files that you're going to put into the header of your website. And what this does is this, this pulls in jQuery, uh, Colorbox, which is the overlay cart, um, and then some styling as well, and then the core functionality of FoxyCart that's needed so that way everything stays connected. So step one, we're just going to copy this, and we're going to paste it into the header of our website. Now I've set up just a very bare bones uh, HTML page here, and I'm going to put this into the header of my website here. Now when I go to my website, there's nothing there because we still have to add a product in there. So let's do that now. So if we go back and we go to step two, you're going to see two different HTML examples here. One is a link and one is a form. And I'm going to go over in just a moment the difference between the two and when, and when one's more appropriate than the other. But we're just going to copy both of these. And we're going to go in and now paste these into the body of our HTML site. Now again, you can add products anywhere you can embed HTML or a link. So that could be a tweet, that could be an email, it could be a Facebook page, um, it doesn't matter. Um, so there's, there's lots of possibilities with this setup. All right, so we paste it into the body because we want our customers to see these two options here. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back to my page and refresh here. So now you're going to see two different examples. One is a link base and one is a form base. So let me just show you what it looks like now with FoxyCart implemented into my website. And I'll go through the checkout process. And then I'll come back and explain, kind of break down the products. So I click that link here. And now we've got, and it looks like I already had a product in there, but you've got the red color, cool example, and then the SKU that we passed through. Now I can go to this one here and choose the second product. This is a form-based product. I can choose the size and add it to cart. And you're going to see a large, cool example. Now I'm going to go to checkout. Now, I've already created an account. I opted to have mine set up as where I can do guest or account. And it's going to recognize that I'm already in there. Pre-fills my information. You see the information that's in the cart there. And then I implemented, I already, already added my test card information. Now, we do have test card information in our documentation. Uh, and there's different ones for different gateways. And even your gateway themselves will provide test card information. So if you do need help with that, feel free to reach out and we can get you the information you need. But I'm going to go ahead with my test card information here and confirm my order. And as you see, I've still got our neutral default template here, the receipt, and the process is done. So I just went from adding the product to the website, adding it to the cart, checking out, reviewing, and then hitting the receipt page. Um, so it's super, super quick. And now I want to break down product setup and kind of break down how uh, what information is passed just a little bit. We're going to do a future webinar uh, really going more in depth into products. And I'm going to go over some different product types for you as well. So when you pass in uh, different type of products, you're going to, all you're doing is passing in different parameters. So you may have the name. So for a form here, we've got name, price, code, size, and you can add any other parameters you want, format, um, you know, texture, fabric, uh, it doesn't matter. And you can even modify the price with those as well, and I'll go over that in just a second. Um, and so with the link, all you're doing is passing those in, into the link URL there as parameters. And with the form, you're passing them in as different fields, hidden or visible to the customer. So now I want to take you to a demo section where we're going to go over the different types of products um, this is actually available to you on our homepage, boxycart.com. If you'll scroll down just a little bit, you're going to see a Try Me section where we set up a nice little demo where you can choose the type of product and then if you want to see a form example or a link example. Uh, so let's go over this. We went over a simple product, but let me show this too though. You also have a parameter for image where you can pass in the image of that product, and I'll show you how that looks. So now, We've got image in the product. And let me clear this out so I can show you a couple of different ones here.
So let's go to a bundle product. We get asked about this a lot. How can I have two products added to the cart with one click of the button? And so this can be easily done by creating separate product parameters indicated by, by the, the number of that product. So the first one is a default one and two and three and so on. And so when we add this, it's going to add the camera in the camera bag at one time. Each product can have its own parameters or customizations, its own pricing, its own product category. Um, it's, it's pretty nice because they're each individual, but you can add them at the same time. And then we also have a form example as well, so you can break down how that looks. And let's look at a custom product. So this, this comes in handy quite a bit, especially for, for merchants that are doing uh, products that need uh, options that the, the customer can change. Um, and sometimes those options need to affect the price, maybe decrease, increase, or change other options. And so in this example, we're going to show you we have a red uh, option, but we can change the color of the customer. We can also change the, um, the type of fabric, so cotton or silk. In this case, we're actually going to increase the price by $5 if they choose silk. And you'll see that product in there and all the details that you pass. Donations are a great way to use FoxyCart. We have many organizations that use us for this, uh, whether that be one-time, recurring, um, any number of frequencies, and I'm going to go over that with you here. Um, so sometimes it may be more sense to have just a simple link donation button that just says, hey, click here to donate $25. But in other cases, it may make more sense to actually allow the, the donor to choose how much they want to give. And so this is a great example where a form makes more sense than a link type product. All we do is make the price field visible to the customer, and they can input it however much they want. And then you're going to see the donation right there. And finally, but not least, subscriptions. Subscriptions are super powerful with FoxyCard. And just so you know, we use our own subscription functionality to bill our users. So you're in good hands there. Um, so in this case, let's look at a link example. This one is set at a monthly subscription as the name, the price is $25, and the frequency is once a month. And so we click subscribe. We'll go down here and we'll see it. Monthly subscription every month starting today, and then bill again this time next month. And that's great, but sometimes people need a little more flexibility. What if you have a service where you need to offer options? Okay, pay monthly or pay annually. So in this case, we could say monthly is 25, or if you want to choose yearly, you can save some money. And so all we're doing is putting our options there and then increasing the price or setting the price as needed. So now we've got subscription every year starting this year, bill again this time next year. So. That gives you a pretty good overview of different product types. Now, again, you can do even more. You can use FoxyCart for, for invoicing, or you can use it for digital downloads, which we could host for you, or you can host yourself. Uh, the possibilities are really endless. And this is actually coming from not just a team member of FoxyCart, but a developer myself. I, you know, I've used FoxyCart for quite a few years now, and uh, I've tried a lot of solutions. And FoxyCart's one of the first that I've found, the only at this point, that can really lets me have full customization of the entire process, still in any type of product that I need to. Um, so once you've got your product implemented, you've tested it, now it's time to go live. So you're going to go back to the FoxyCard administration, and you can either go to the dashboard or to the payment page, and you're going to see this green button here, Start My FoxyCard Subscription. So all you're going to do is click there to start it, and you're going to choose what plan you want to be on, and then you'll check out from there. And once you're done, you'll be able to go back to the payment page and set the store to live servers. And once you've done that, you're going to input your gateway credentials that are provided by your gateway. Um, and then I always recommend at the end, once you set it all up, maybe do one more test transaction you know, for a dollar or something just to make sure that the gateway is connected and your credentials are correct. So this covers. FoxyCar 101, the basics of FoxyCar, there's tons to go into, and we're planning lots more webinars coming up.